Hello and welcome to Muddy's Cause Crime Live. Um, Pet Theft Awareness Week is now over, but we are doing a one-off with um, Richard Ackers from Justice for Reggie um, on the very important campaign that they have, which Richard will speak about in full. Um, it covers a lot of things such as illegal breeding, um, online sales being regulated. A lot of questions may come up to Richard in the comments, so please feel free to ask what you want. Uh, Muddy Paws Crime backs the campaign, um, you know, from start to, you know, as you're going on, Rick, um, very much behind you and will push anything out for you. You've done absolutely fantastic with what you've achieved. So, first of all, thank you for coming on. No, thanks for having me. Thank you. And um, for people that probably not many don't know about Justice for Reggie, but for people that don't know, um, can you tell us a little bit about how the campaign formed and why? Uh, yeah, for, more or less it was from my uh, stupidity, really, of being a bit naive. And uh, what uh, my little lad, he was uh, seven, seven at the time. And uh, I went to, we, we wanted a dog, so I went on a, a well-known website, I looked and I saw a re really nice Labrador from the fella asking I see mum, etc. and all the all the questions you meant to ask really. And it checked out. Uh, I went to the property and things started to change, like mum wasn't there. But the seller was really quick in with his answers and he was really persuasive for uh, saying, Oh mum's uh, the, uh, the Reggie's mum was uh, uh, his mum's and it, his mum lived in Stoke and he was moving and things like that. And but when I went to the house things didn't look right. It was like a show home. There wasn't much furniture in, but he said he was moving in the house. And he, he kind of convinced me everything he asked. And uh, he was, a re I'd say, con man. Uh, but it, it, it's a bad word for it said, but he was really convincing. And anyone who says, oh, you've been a bit stupid there, I do hold my hands up. But uh, this man was really good at what he does. And he's done it not only to me, but to a few, uh, well, to another person we spoke to as well. Uh, and then what we did, well, we got Reggie home. We had him 14, 16 hours. He had a uh, diarrhea and it got progressively worse with vomiting. And uh, we won the vets, so he went into the vets. Uh, this was through COVID, so we couldn't stop with him. We couldn't win with him. We couldn't see him. And it was like an up and down roller coaster over the weekend. And uh, and it was like 70%. It was diagnosed with parvovirus, uh, which is highly contagious. And uh, over the weekend, uh, it, it was... 70% chance of living uh, and then 30% chance of dying and then we was called into the vets on the Monday and they said uh, he's had a blood transfusion or oh, we put him down and now I said blood transfusion the vet was really good with us he said come down and see him because I, I don't think you'd make that decision if you come and there was blood coming from his eyes his, his ears and he just looked in a hor horrible horrible way really something no one should have to be in not nothing Mm -hmm. uh, and we just said it's better to put him down. Uh, so we, that's what we did. Uh, we sat, I had Sam the form and Alicia asked me, could I, could, would I stop him with him while they do it? Didn't want him being on his own. It was like the worst thing, one of the worst things I'd ever done. It was horrible. Uh, the sound of that machine going off and seeing him pass, it was a, a real horrible start. Uh, and then we, Alicia put something out on Facebook saying what's happened and it got a, like it got a lot of interest saying things have happened to me and it's happening a lot, so we just set up the campaign to raise awareness at start, and it's just gone from strength to strength, really, in our opinion. Uh, and now we're speaking with, I think it's sixteen of the UK's biggest selling websites because I feel they had a major part and they didn't accept it in uh, Reggie's death. Obviously, a lot of it weighs with me and my uh, me funding puppy farming, and we also had a petition uh, to regulate the online animal sales, which passed the hundred and nine thousand was debated at Westminster. And that's, in a nutshell, what we've done. <laughs> so you turned um, what, which is such a sad tragedy, into obviously awareness to help other people and other animals. Um, I mean, you said about being naive, but obviously, okay, when you look back, uh, but then you don't expect that kind of thing to happen to you. And of course, then you've got these cute pups you know, in front of you, and it's very difficult to walk away, isn't it, Rick? Yeah, I think that's 
one of the issues I've got with online, sorry, Emily's <laughs> uh, just barking, but uh, one of the issues I've got with the online selling sites at the minute, it's so easy to look at an advert and to lie on it and to get that person to the house. And that's what the, the seller did with me. He got me to the house. And when I, when I got to the house, I'll be honest with myself, I was taking it when he was interacting with me and jumping up. Uh, there was no way I was leaving him there, and that's what these sellers want. They want they want you to get you to the house, and these online selling platforms are allowing them to lie on it and to get to, to get away with minimal information. Now we we pre loved uh, massively last year, and they've brought out uh, uh, ident uh, facial identification, uh, a safety deposit scheme, a uh, minimum number of words, a minimum number of pictures. It's all small things, but it goes a long way into helping determine who's a seller. Uh, I have the argument of a lot of people saying what's more important to uh, recognise, the to uh, identify the dog or identify the seller. And in my opinion, it's a seller, the person selling the pet. It's more important to identify them because if they keep getting away with not giving their identification away, they keep getting away with it and more and more dogs are harmed. Where if we don't identify the dog, if there's nothing wrong with it, then there's no problem there. But these, it's the same people doing it all the time, and they need to. We need to clamp down on it and say, right, we know who this person is. They are doing it, and they're in. They're in the public eye, which a lot of the time is the hard part. Recognizing who, who who's doing this, and I know I'm sure you speak to a lot of people that like we do. Uh, people are doing like undercover work, really, and, and, and bringing names out, and it's the same names over and over again. And uh, I, why they're still getting away with it, I do not know. And um, just a comment in that uh, Lisa Smith has put in. Um, are you given any information uh, regarding puppy farming? Um, I guess that's UK, Ireland. Um, and what do you do? I mean, obviously, we know that you can only say certain things here. Um, what do you do with the information? Uh, do you investigate it yourselves? Uh, well, that's funny. We try and not target individual issues because we just feel like targeting to in we're trying to target a, a, a national issue and go to government to get law changed to, to make it better for everyone uh, we did set up with animal protection services uh, like a reporting scheme but unfortunately we what went on with them it had to get, be withdrawn but that was making really good progress but uh with, with the news what come out about them we, we couldn't do it uh reggie was from a puppy farm in in the south of that in, in Ireland, in the Republic of Ireland, and transported illegally. So it's something we're really keen on. Like I said, we're not a big big enough team or got enough time to investigate individual errors. So we've got a good link in the RSPCA, we pass it on to them. The Scottish S, uh, well, I sit on the board now of all parliamentary dog welfare group, and uh, I, I pass it on to the S, SSPCA as well as the USPCA. Uh, but we can only pass on information at the minute. I'd love to investigate, but I've just not got the time for this. It, it, it's the defenses. time, isn't it? Um, yeah. And obviously, we we both know that, um, unfortunately, police don't take this as serious as we want them to, and nine times out of ten, they want evidence handed to them on a plate. But obviously, we are aware that there are a lot of groups at the moment, you know, trying their hardest to put a stop to what is going on with both pet I mean pet theft obviously ties into illegal breeding in a big way um you know the, the, uh, you know me I call it a jigsaw puzzle it's like every single part of it needs to be addressed um so uh, just, just expanded on that you said the police uh, don't want to do anything I, I I do think some areas are doing really well like I speak to a, 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 a constabulary in Durham and uh, uh Sus I think it's Sussex the other one and they seem to be again uh, doing really well. It's other areas what are not doing nothing, and then the targeting, you know, the, the weaker areas really. It's same with the councils with illegal breeding. Now it is everyone blames the RSPCA, but it is an actual council issue for illegal breeding. And some councils are doing absolutely amazing work. The, the, we spoke to someone in South Wales who, who absolutely brilliant, uh, and then there's others, 80, 70, 80 percent of them doing nothing they're not even going out when like i reported red yet they never we, we even visited the address and he got two reports of two different dogs now if he went to the first one and shut it down i went to bought red yet and to if he went and saw red yet in the state he was in and, and done the test he should have done when it was first reported then 
it matters if it saved his life, and that's just the the worst thing really. That these councils and police, so I can't say all because some are doing brilliant work, but it needs a collective collective effort across the UK, and you can't just say, oh, this, you know, this part of the country is doing really well. Well, they just moved to another part of the country and get away with it. So everyone needs. This is what we're, I, I met with Death for a part of our petition. We get we have a quarterly meeting with Death, and this is something what. He sat in with our website meetings as well. It's something what's really come up that the councils and police need to do more when investigating because everyone's given grief to the RSPCA. They got two million calls last year. It's just too. It's a massive charity with massive money. And I, I do believe they should be doing more, but when they gain two million calls, <laughs> we get about eighteen complaints a week and we struggle with dealing with them. So I can't really criticise the RSPCA. So yeah, that, that was it. Uh, Everyone needs to do more. And what we found in our meetings as well, when I've attended meetings, people don't want to team up. Like we spoke to the Dogs Trust and uh, and we spoke to Batters Bay. We spoke to a lot of them. Uh, they do a little bit of it, uh, you know, inter intercross work, and uh, uh, but they seem to be going on their own. And now we feel if everyone come together and spoke with one voice, saying right, we want this, but everyone seems to have different opinions, which is fair enough, but. I feel that we all need to come together and say, right, what do we want? Do we want website sales? Yes or no? I, I, I understand that. You don't, Lisa, and I, I respect that. But I think there's a place for website sales. It just needs to be safe. But if you say, right, website sales are not going to happen, this is my idea, and it's a good idea, I'd go with that. Uh, and let's just all speak with one voice. And, uh, and I think government will be a lot more inclined to change things then. It's just, again, a lot, a lot of people go into them with loads of different ideas. And they don't know who's telling the truth, and that's a problem. And it's big organisations laying us down after that. Yeah, I mean, I've been saying quite a lot while I've been doing the lives the past week that um, I am very, very much for groups coming together um, to work together. One group standing alone can't do everything that needs to be done. Um, you know, and I've, I've welcomed anybody, any group that wants to work alongside Muddy Pools Crime. Let's get together. Let's you know, make a difference to the situation as it as is at the moment. So much needs to be done that we have to come together to, you know, help. Um, Karen Field is just saying, do you find that trading standards will follow up on reports of illegal breeding? Um, what's your experience, <coughs> Rick? Well, that's another thing. It's all area specific again. Like we, we, we started gathering a bit of data from a couple of websites and uh, websites are reporting issues. So the, what, what we find now, the, the banning adverts and banning people and they've actually, tech, when they take the, you know, the photo identification, what we'd help set up with a couple of them, uh, they're actually reporting them. And then trading standards, are, there's no feedback whatsoever. Uh, it, it's something like 11% uh, of, of adverts reported that get, uh, a feedback or you know the training standards come back and say this is what was done about it or they hear anything about it so we feel a bit of openness like i know with close case you know open close cases like that you can't really be open but the websites are just saying right is this man okay to sell dogs or is he not we would like to know because he is advertising on our site and we have banned him now if we've done something wrong and he is okay you've been out and said he's a licensed breeder he's, he's doing everything right we'll let him back on but they don't get that. So a bit of open, openness as well. If uh, There's nothing wrong with breeding dogs. Just do it correctly and uh, right and get get a licence. And do, instead of doing it for money, do it with the best interest of the dogs. At her, and that's what any good breeder should do. Uh, trading standards, like I said, there's a lot of bad, but there are some good. So I can't say it on a... It's like an individual case, really. Uh, but there is massive improvements to be made uh, through the council i think 620 councils across the country uh and what i've found is the same people are licensing a local trippy to a licensing a local like a local dog breeder and i think there needs to be a lot more training to what to you know expect for uh you know a local dog breeder now these dog breeders are making thousands of pounds so why not put a bit of a charge in place for getting them licensed or a bit more of a charge and train the licensing officer and, uh, and make it, I'd like to see like a dog license back and, uh, and things like that as well. Uh, but like I say, yeah, it's all area specific at the minute. We are gathering details like others, but it's just a man feel what's going on. Uh, like I said, South Wales have got a, 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 an in, a separate dog 
trading standards department. And I think that's, I'd love to see that, you know, nationwide. Uh, but unfortunately, speaking with others, uh, DEFRA, etc., the money doesn't seem to be there to do it. And um, obviously, you know, if, if we can push for licensing, um, I mean, a, a lot that needs to be changed is inspections, yeah. because it's all right getting this license, but then who's inspecting that, you know, I mean, anyone can make a premises look good at the beginning, but who's going to be following up on that? I mean, how, how do you feel with um, how sort of councils treat uh, sort of council licensed breeders at the moment? Do you think that their inspections are sufficient or they need to buck up their ideas? Same again, it's individuals. And like I was talking about individual cases, but yeah, well, general overall, yeah, there's a big improvement to be made. Uh, like, like we say, we, license, we always go on about licensed breeders. Like, I know a few unlicensed breeders who's who do a couple of litters every couple of years and uh, they seem to be the dog's healthy, happy and always get good homes. And then some licensed breeders, like I know there's a couple near me, I live in Wigan, uh, there's a couple, uh, one in Warrington, one in, in Manchester, well known. They were just uh, bringing in multiple different breeds of dogs from Ireland and doing it on a large scale and they've got a five star licence. Uh, in my opinion, that that, that should yeah. be scrapped. Because and, that's, and that's where I'm saying inspections yeah. are paramount, um, you know, with breeding. I mean, you, you know my thoughts about breeding. I don't like it at all. But no. obviously, I don't think that's ever going to change, unfortunately. Um, just a couple of the comments. Uh, Tina Towers, have you got many vets back in your campaign? As they are on the front line of seeing a lot of what is happening to illegally bred dogs and cats. Yeah, uh, we, well, we speak with vets. We've, we've got a couple of vets we speak to, and, uh, and when I did my petition, a lot of vets put the poster up. But there seems, like, I, I spoke to the, the British Vets Association as well, and there seems to be a very reluctance about coming out and backing campaigns and change and things like that. Uh, and I just find it strange, like, like there was, I think there was a, a report of an increase in parvovirus just before Christmas around my area of over 500%. Uh, and then still vets, the, 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 I was on a, a radio show uh, with a vet uh, talking about it, uh, about, about pervivirus and the, the increase in our local area. It was BBC Radio Manchester, I think. And uh, it, it just it just seemed daft how, how they won't come out and back something like that. Obviously, a link to pervivirus is dirty conditions, bad breeding, poorly bred animals, uh, lack of vaccination. And it comes with a lack of knowledge, I think, about how to care for new newborn puppies. So why wouldn't they come out and, and say there's there's more to be done and uh, and this should change? But there seems to be a reluctance with vets. I find I don't I know you speak to them as well, Lisa. I don't know what your opinion is, but uh, vets have a lot. To to me, they should be taking the forefront and coming out and saying we're seeing a lot of this, and I don't think it's happened through the pandemic. Yeah, vet, vets need to uh, up their game a lot about a lot of different issues. Yeah. Um, just talking about vets, um, going on to microchips, when you got Reggie, was he already microchipped or did you have to get him microchipped? Yeah, it was, he, was, he was microchipped and I got a, we got a card, but it was the wrong microchip number in Reggie that was on the card, so he was microchipped, but uh, like I said, I should, that was my, uh, my fault really, I should have uh, checked the microchip card with the database and, and things like that before I took Reggie, like I said, I, was a, I had a, a lot of blame to put on myself uh, I wasn't totally innocent uh, far from it so yeah but he was microchipped uh, but it was it wasn't his chip uh, unfortunately yeah I've been seeing a lot of things online lately um, you know microchipping courses this that and the other I do personally feel that it should only be vets um, that microchip um and you know to be keeping everything like on one database because there's just things all over the place at the moment um it's absolutely ridiculous what what's your opinion on the way that the microchip databases are at the moment having so many uh, yeah i think we should speak for about three days on microchips it's just an absolute mess isn't it uh and it has been for years i think there's 17 different companies that have license uh chip chipping companies in the uk and why would you want 17 one two th maybe even three and then on a national database but uh like i said some chipping companies they're not even displaying the, the the right information in the right places so and they're still government licensed and regulated aren't they so it, it it's just something what was meant to do a world of good and 
has not really lived up to expectations, Chipping. And now they're saying all cat, all cats, you know that the cats are following. Uh, 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 yeah, must have a ch cat chip. Uh, they've not got the dogs right, so uh, it's well, just, exactly. Yeah, I yeah, mean, we all know what we all know what some thieves do to microchips, and um, it's beyond appalling. So, um, just a couple of the comments. Um, Will Dixon has said Wales have set up a trade and standards team to tackle the issues. I don't know if you know more about that. Um, and then he says, I believe England may be training a trading standards team. No, I'm, I, I, mean, I sport to death for it's, a it's not my area, really. No. So I, I sport to death for three weeks ago, and, and they said nothing about that. But uh, if that's happening, brilliant. Like, like I say, I, I, first time I've heard of that, no. Let's have a look at some more comments. Uh, Now, the licensing standards are sufficient. Unfortunately, as Rick said, there is a lack of knowledge or effort with some local authorities. A personal opinion is licensing standards are not sufficient. Um, so not enough inspections are being done. So I do think that needs to be addressed. Um, Christine Eels, uh, there are kennel club registered breeders who have multiple dogs to breed, producing up to 10 litres a year with no licences and not doing all necessary genetic testing. Do you deal with the Kennel Club much, Rick? I no, I, I think I had one meeting with them, but I, I, some of, it's another hurdle as well. I think you've got Kennel Club registered breeders and Kennel Club assured breeders. And I, I think the assured breeders are, are, are pretty much 100% legit. The, the KC registered, I, I, I think that's what we've got, we've got a long way to improve. Uh, and it's kind of misleading people that that tag and saying oh it's KC registered doesn't mean nothing. It needs to be KC assured. assured. And uh, I think people get confused into them them two different things. And, uh, and I think uh, people need to be aware, which we are we both aware of, is that um, a lot of well, say a lot. Sorry, um, some kennel club papers can be false. We see so that. Yeah, we see must, that a lot. Double check. Yeah, we see, we we probably have. I'd say up to 80 complaints now, and they've all been forged. Kennel Club papers and really good forgeries. Like we, it took, we sent it off to uh, a training standards department. They come back and, uh, and we checked them with the KC. We sent them to KC and they said they're not our papers. Uh, and, and it's it's amazing how good these people are. And uh, they'll, they'll bring these papers out. And they, they, one was even watermarked, which was it was shocked me. Uh, and it's still, still fake. So... Anyone, like when you go and you get KC papers, you think, oh, brilliant, this dog's safe and healthy. And unfortunately, it doesn't mean nothing. Uh, I have tried to get the Kennel Club link up with websites and offer, you know, the, the assured breeders onto the websites, but that wasn't, I think the KC uh, have, have their own website selling dogs, so they didn't want to verge from that. So I have tried, but that's another thing that they didn't want to come forward. And I said, as many people who get, safe you know uh, uh, and they have the hip scores and, uh, and elbow scores and everything like that and they get the best possible chance that i'm all for uh but there was a there was a very <laughs> the door got slammed in my face very quickly there so i have tried i all i also i know you deal with deal with a lot of rescues and people on here what i have tried and i, I encourage people to come forward and try and help me with is to get rescues advertising on uh selling websites and i spoke to a lot of the selling websites and they said they'll put the rescues first uh, before top of the list of any such of dog, so uh, I got three out of the eighty-two we speak to said they'll do it, and there was a, a reluctance to even uh, for a rescue to get involved or a charity to get involved with the websites, and I think that had a lot to do with criticism and funding, uh, but I think it'd be amazing because what I sport well, six of the f uh, sixteen websites have said they'll stop selling animals if they get enough rescues to advertise on their website. And I think if, if I can do that, then I'd, I'd be over the moon. That uh, would be amazing. Yeah. Like I say, a lot of the, lot of the websites uh, are only selling animals because it gets traffic to the page and obviously they get adverts. So they can replace that traffic and do something with charity and up, they'd stop selling animals. That's That's been broadly said across the board. Uh, but there seems to be a reluctant from rescues and others to make that happen but the websites are all for it yeah so obviously we're not naming names of uh, websites but 
are there any of the major ones that are refusing, obviously without naming them, um, major ones that people obviously will be aware of, um, yeah. are there some refusing to kind of back the campaign about the online sales, about getting them regulated? There's a couple who don't speak to us. Uh, last year, I've, I've, I've tried to reach out for, to a couple and they just don't want to know. I'll keep doing it. Like I say, it's only a talk. I'm not here for criticise anyone. I, I, like, I think you did a bit of volunteering with us last, week, uh, last year, Lisa. We, we don't really criticise. We, we're not here to say, you, you, you're wrong. We're just here to talk about the issue and, and try and make it better. Uh, we, we try and stop the don't do the blame game and say you have to blame for all this where i think a lot of us feel that websites are, are, are the enemy but speaking to the people behind them they're all lovely people and and they do want the best like i have met with gumtree i'll name with gumtree and they've said they're probably they're looking to advertise rescues on their sites but they just can't get that link uh and i think we feel that gumtree are lacking a little bit in in the animal welfare on the site but speaking to them They've got so many plans in place and it it, it 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 sounds like it's going to be amazing safe site for for animals but it's just lacking at the minute and that's just frustrating bit because these people have got amazing ideas and plans in place but it just takes so so long to do and it has to go through a big chain and sound off and uh, and it comes down to money as well uh, but they have they're the biggest indications are saying we would allow rescue animals on their site and I, I, i'm all i'm all for it and that's what i want uh, yeah, well, no, yes. I mean, you know, where, where I say about banned animal cells, if, if, if that was the case about rescue animals going on sites, that is a completely different, um, you know, issue. I, I mean, it would be amazing because a lot of people don't even know what rescues to go to, do they? No, um, no. If they're checked out properly, then, uh, which obviously I hope the sites would do because anybody, as we know, can open a rescue and um you know i'm very passionate about rescues also being licensed and regulated yeah i, th I think that's the first thing what we all, all have called for is to regulate rescues and then them to go online and set you know advertise animals because i think there is uh, there is bad rescues out there as well we, we were talking about bad breeders and bad sellers the bad rescues is taking uh like making like you know taking loads of puppy farm dogs not reporting the puppy farmer couple of weeks later taking loads more off him loads more and surely there's a better way than that they should be reporting that person saying right we'll take your dogs this time uh like and then report them and say this person just dropped 48 different kinds of breeder dogs off uh can, can you investigate him because all the unsellable dogs are coming to him we spoke to a, a rescue last week and they're getting so many greyhounds from the uh you know the, the racing and uh, yeah. just shipping them over from Ireland, uh, and they're just getting greyhound after greyhound, and it seems to be an unpopular breed at the minute. Now, I said I'd take them all, but they're saying they've only got space for 10 greyhounds in the rescue, and uh, they're just getting inundated with them, and people don't want to take a greyhound. They want, like, a, a Labrador or, 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 or something like, you know, a more popular dog, and uh, it seems like, uh, they said they have puppy farmers come to them. They won't deal with puppy farmers and saying, "Can you take these dogs? I can't sell them." Now that's that's your problem. You shouldn't be breeding dogs if 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 you don't if you think, "Oh, I can't sell them. What can I do with them?" Because there's that many dog breeders now, and I think the, the demand has gone down a little bit this year. Uh, websites are saying the opposite. They're saying it's it's going to be a record breaking year for animal sales, and the record breaking year for advertisements, but. Uh, like I said, there's, there's 13 million people on a dog in this country now. Uh, it, it can't, there's not much more trade left there be, before we see a real, real big issue with abandon, it, abandon, abandonment. <laughs> so I couldn't get my words out then because people are just going to start dumping dogs uh, because rescues are full. Uh, and They are. And, um, you know, touching back to um, some rescues, and please, when anyone's watching this we are not having a dig at rescues because there are some fantastic ones out there and we couldn't do without you but unfortunately we have to target and have to look at the bad ones um also um and there are rescues taking puppy farming dogs and as you said rick these puppy farmers are not being reported and while you're taking the dogs and i i know you know i take my hat off to you for looking after these dogs the, the issue is the more you take these dogs 
the more animal welfare issues you're going to have on the puppy farms and they will keep breeding because they know that you're going to be taking the dogs and I can't say too much I know what you're being told will happen if you don't take the dogs um, but th th there has to be a stop somewhere because it's otherwise it's just going to go on forever definitely I think if I was in that position I'd probably take the dogs as well I can't call them but it's doing no help, is it? It's, it's a difficult one, isn't it? It's... Yeah. Well, I say, we, we talk about rescues as well, and, and you said there's amazing rescues now. I walked 230 uh, two miles to Downing Street to and in the petition. I raised £2,000 for Hawk Rescue and almost uh, ho almost home dog rescue in Chester. I've still not given the... I've still got £100 here from, so I need to drop that off if they're watching. But, uh, yeah... I, I think they do amazing work. There's a lot. Uh, Wood Green as well, amazing work. Jerry Green Dog Rescue, we speak to a lot. Uh, all doing amazing work. But like, like I said, Hope Rescue just have a no puppy farming. Uh, you know, Bandy won't, they won't take them. And, and I think that's the right way myself. But like I say, if I was in their position, I'd probably keep taking them because if they didn't take them, these dogs are going to end up shot and dead. Aren't they? I know it's horrible, but that's what's going to happen. So. Maybe they feel they're doing the right thing. It's easy for us to comment and say they're doing wrong. But, yeah, they're in a difficult position, which I do feel for them, really. But, I, like I say, it's doing no good like me with Reggie. I give £1,500. I thought I was saving Reggie from a, a bad bad situation. But I've just I've just uh, allowed that man to buy four or five more dogs and bring them over and probably suffer the same. So, it, it's like you're taking 48 to get another 48 in the world and, and another 48 lives ruined and so on and so on and like we were edgy it's just a multiple probably would have bought five and then from that five 25 and then 15 and 100 and and people like people's lives are just being ruined financially from vet bills and and dogs lives from uh, from pain really and if you tell us a little bit about obviously um you did so well um with obviously you know you handing your letter into parliament and you actually been in Parliament, Rick. Do you want to tell us a little bit about your experience there? Yes, yeah, so I walked to, a, well, it was a bit lessened because I walked down the air farm and I got picked up by a policeman. <laughs> and he said, you can't walk on here. And he run me about 20 miles. So this is the first thing I've said. I must book. say, I do. I am sorry. I did giggle when I read that because I could just <laughs> imagine you. <laughs> <laughs> I was, yeah, I was, I, so I, I walked three days uh, into Leicester. And then from Leicester, I was walking to Milton Keynes. And uh, halfway to Milton Keynes, then the A5, uh, I was in tears. My feet was bleeding. And I was just sat on the drill carriageway and I was ready for giving up. And then a policeman just come past with his sirens on around the other side of the drill carriageway. And then I thought, he's looking at me. I'm like, why is, he, why is he staring at me? And then he come down the other way and pulled in. And I thought, oh, no, I'm going to get arrested here. I've done so, like, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, I thought it was like staging a protest or something. <laughs> and then he said, can you get in back? I, I, you can't walk along here. And he asked me what I'm doing. I said, I'm walking to Downing Street. He said, you're a long way to go. And uh, he just, he said, get, can you get, like, I'll, I'll take you to somewhere safe because there's nothing around here. So he run me about 15, 20 miles uh, down to, into Milton Keynes, which was a godsend, but I felt like I cheated the walk a little bit. And uh, yeah, my feet were sore. I walked up uh, 10 Downing Street. We had, uh, Sky cover it, Sky News, we had uh, uh, ITV cover it, uh, we did a bit on BBC Breakfast, loads of radio stations, it was an absolutely brilliant day, uh, and we went to, up to 10 Downing Street, and in the petition, and then it was debated in Parliament, I actually got to attend, and it was it was attended by about 18 MPs, which was one of the biggest uh, attended petitions on uh, animal welfare since Lucy's Law, so it was a, a massive marker, really, and it was praised for our work. But what come of it, they also said they, they recognise the problem with websites and that something needs to be done, but they just don't know what yet. So they said, like, we recognise the problem, which is half the battle, really. And then, uh, luckily enough, we get, just get to speak with Death for every, every quarter now and, and just have a chat, and they're going to review it in... 2023 which is a long time off i know but they said they've scheduled a review for the october 2023 on uh, animal sales online so we're just building up to that and uh it's more of a a marathon not a sprint anymore we just thought something had happened quickly but it's going to take a long time and things are happening uh but it's, like i say it's just 
just it's just a, a long time happening. Uh, it's going to be another eighteen months before they they have the official review. And we was also mentioned in Parliament on the animal wealth uh, animals uh, animals bill uh, in November, and uh, Olivia Blake and Luke Pollard uh, come out and said they wanted online animal sales regulated, and that was Labour's stance. Uh, but the Conservatives rejected it and said they wasn't uh, prepared to go that far with animal sales at the minute. Okay. Um, well, well done on you know so everything that you've achieved. Um, Will in the comments have just put Northern Ireland are way way behind on their Animal Welfare Act for licensing, which hasn't been updated since two thousand and eleven. I know you speak to a lot of people in Northern Ireland. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if you want to give a view about Northern Ireland? I think, I think, they're, I think they're behind in general, to be honest, on, on everything to do with animal welfare. It's, uh, I spoke to Robin Newton, the uh, the actual animal welfare bu budget uh, for the all, all of Northern Ireland is 1.4 million. There's no money there to police it. No matter what, they're bringing out Lucy's Law. Brilliant, they're doing really well, but there's no money there. It needs money to police it, and they've not got the money. Uh, there to do any whatever they bring out there. I'm s sorry to be so negative and I hate doing it, but if you've not got the money to please something or do something right, there's going to be a loophole after loophole after loophole like we've seen in Lucy's Law, and it's going to happen no matter what they do in Northern Ireland. They've not got the funding to to do anything what's needed to be done, and uh, it's just with the border. It's a it, it's a free border from Ireland to Northern Ireland, so they just can't stop that trade. I think uh, I spoke to the USPCA and there's 14 big puppy farmers opened up on the north side of the Republic of Ireland. So, and that's just saying we want uh, puppies going into Northern Ireland and then transported over here. Uh, like I said, we know of a couple of transporters who are doing doing that a couple of times a week and, and bringing 300 dogs over a time. So it's uh, absolutely appalling conditions. And uh, we'd say they had a lot of to answer for, but even in Wales now, Wales is the puppy, f puppy firm, uh, capital of Europe, I think, uh, that, you know, are, are in hand with Ireland. So it, it's just a mess and, and it needs a big overall, I feel. It, the current, what, what's in place at the minute, it's not working and it needs more adding to it and all oh, completely ripping up and starting again <laughs> because it's just failing everyone. It, not it does. The dogs. whole thing needs to be reshaped um, <coughs> about. Um, just touching on uh, transportation, um, I'm quite passionate about a lot needs to be done with the ports. Um, but again, it, it just all comes down to money all the time, doesn't it? This is the problem. Yeah, sorry, I was wasn't on the <laughs> Got a bit of a call. Uh, yeah, that, it just comes down with trade. We sports for Border Force with the USPCA. And it just comes down to training and, uh, uh, and staffing, really. <laughs> They, they know the people who are doing it. it, it it's the same vans rocking up every week. Uh, well, similar vans. Uh, uh, and they know what's happening. But it's just... Uh, like I spoke to, spoke to someone over the last week and they said uh, they got to stop the transit van and they looked it back, there was nothing in it. And then they started to... Take, they heard like a weeping sound and they took, you know, the sides off, boards and then underneath. And they found 16 dogs in the side and underneath the transit van. And, and that's just not right. And the person wasn't arrested. He was just turned away. They didn't take the dogs. They just turned the van away. And really, oh, absolutely disgusting. It is, yeah. And it's just, it's just a cost of uh, seizing the dogs. Uh, it, you know, with the local council, because when Border Force sees them, it's not, the, it's not them who's paying for it. It's the local council. And to put them somewhere, it's, it's the actual cost. Like, uh, I think they seized nine puppies the other week. And they said the cost was ten thousand pounds to to get them into a shelter, you know, and and to rehabilitate them back into normal life. And the council just can't afford to do that on a regular basis. So instead of doing that, they just turn the people away and they find another route. So it'd be much better if, if border force and, uh, and uh, it's like Belfast council really and just just get the money in place and say if you caught transporting more than one or you know dogs what belong to you, we take them from you, and if the, if the, if they're illegal, we take them from you and that's it, you're prosecuted. But that doesn't seem to be happening. They just turned away to get another route. And uh, there's, I think there's three big ports in the UK. There's one up in Scotland and uh, Hollyhead and they seem to be coming in through through the 
through Belfast Port and, and Dublin as well. So we just need to monitor them routes. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, we'll put the last survey recorded 2015 around 750 licensed breeders in the whole of the UK. Um, obviously, again, you know, talking about licensed breeders, a lot needs to be done with regards to inspections. Um, and I think the licenses need to be hotter for breeders. Um, Christine Eels has just put, in the last hour, Vet Times has supported the government reform of microchip regulations. Did you hear anything about this, Rick? No, no, first I have heard of it, but it's really good news. Uh, yes. anything, anything like that, yeah, brilliant. Mm -hmm. Um, if, you, if you've got a link for that, Christine, um, if you could pop it in the comments and private message uh, me and Rick, that would be really, really helpful. Um, so, just, with... just, just going on that as well, what Will said, <laughs> I spoke to Death for last month from the, the, the producer star rating of all the licensed breeders throughout the UK, so each council has to produce you know, the star rating for each licensed breeder in the area, and that's not been done since pre-COVID, but speaking to them that will be coming back this year and i think that's a massive help to have somewhere to look and see who's a licensed breeder in your area and what star rating they've got you now i still do have a problem with, like, i know people who's got like a big organization who's got a five star uh, license reading so i'm not saying they're perfect but it does go a long way in helping and uh you know people making it might make people do a bit more and say but listen i want a five star rating i'm going to do this and, and make my animals a little, you know make a bigger cage a uh, bigger, well, I say a pen for them, uh, uh, provide more water and things like that. And it's just a bit of animal welfare conditions. I think it does help. I'm not saying it's perfect, but I, I think that will go a long way in, in, in helping the situation. Like It's like little steps like that, and that, that's what I like seeing, uh, you know, bits of improvements and, uh, and like that, what it was it Christian just said, uh, brilliant. Like little things like that from big people make a huge difference and they get light to the situation. And that's what I said to websites. Like we only say uh, provide five pictures per advert, so people can't take one picture off Google and say that's their dog. It's hard to get five pictures of the same dog off Google. So I, I think that goes a long way in to to helping the situation. No, it's not perfect, and it's not going to solve anything really. But it does it does help that little bit. And I think if we all make them little changes, it, it, it does help. So us saying we're useless and and things need to change and everything needs a complete overall. I do agree with, but if we can just get little changes and save a couple of dogs' lives and uh, and do a lot of them, then I, I, I feel like I've done a, a bit, you know, my time's been worthwhile. No, you've done amazing. And this, um, you know, you're very much with me, um, you know, getting awareness out there to the public about many different issues that people are just not aware of. Um, correct me if I'm wrong as well, Rick. Um, obviously, some people get confused with what, who they should report things to um so police is criminal activity and theft um rspca is more just animal welfare a lot of people go to rspca for illegal breeding animal welfare side yes but it is your trades and standards at the council that will deal with the illegal breeding sides well, generally the three of them tie in together uh, for warrants but try and um, you know report the right thing to the right authority if you want to expand on that Rick I know you have a lot more experience than me yeah that, that's what uh, people think reporting illegal breeding to the RSPCA and they, they go mad when the RSPCA do nothing now, it, they're that busy with I don't know, like we've seen appalling animal welfare conditions over the last 12 months and pictures of what I've seen <coughs> is shocking really but they're too busy with things like that now, they are doing things about illegal breeding. They are uh, not as much as I think they should be doing, but they are doing things about it. Uh, like I said, speaking to the inside and David, which I think you spoke, you spoke to me as well, uh, with David from the RSPCA, absolutely brilliant. Doesn't shy away from anything. I answer any, any questions you have. And uh, it, it, they are really trying them, people at uh, RSPCA. Uh, but yeah. If you got, if you expect illegal breeding, report it to the local council where the person's based, and just keep going. And if the council aren't doing anything about it, just name and shame them because that's what they, it's their job. They're saying all oh, they're, they're understaffed and busy, uh, aren't we all? We're all busy. We're all we're all we all got busy last. Like we've got family for feed. I work and we we run our campaigns. Like we know what busy is. Uh, but these people, they need to do more trading standards, and and they've got to, they, we've got to hold them accountable. Like dog theft, 
I think it was something stupid, like 1,800 dog thefts last year reported to the police, and every single police and crown commission I spoke to them all throughout the UK has said it's it's a small issue. Dog theft isn't a small issue. It, it, it was eight, I think there was twice as many dog thefts as there was murders. Uh, and having your, it's like having your child stolen in it, and and it, it's something what needs to be addressed. You know, illegal breeding that's in that that's in five figures, and council just seem to be taking it like a pinch of salt, and like, oh, it's only a small issue. It's not it's huge, and it's there's so much money in illegal breeding, issue. and uh, we've got to hold them accountable. I said RSPCA. I, I think we should let up on them. I think they're doing an okay job, and they are overworked. But the council, they need to do more around illegal breeding. And I do agree, the police did need to do more around dog theft because... Uh, but again, then again, it's the courts as well. The courts aren't giving the punishments out, are they? Uh, when they get to court for a dog theft, what you get in a slap on wrist, maybe maybe a fine. It's, it's just... It's just uh, and it, 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 the, it's a reward, though, for the police for doing that. They'll do all this investigation just to get someone in court and, and not even get a slap on wrist, so... Uh, it's one of them. We just need to keep on and keep raising awareness and and don't let up. I think I've seen some groups be very cr critical and, uh, uh, and target people. I don't think that's a way. I think we should just speak to these people and say, is there a better way of doing it? Now, people, I spoke to some police crown commission and said no, but uh, it's hard not to be critical. But I just think we should build relationships with everyone uh, and just try and get better. Uh, but that seems to be the hard part. People are unwilling to speak, and uh, yeah, and I, I spoke to the local councils, and I, I think there should be a big campaign this year and say any illegal breeders report it to the local council, and we'll run like a, a, a you know, get the the information out to the public and say this is how many was reported, and this is how many were prosecuted, and how many were followed up, and I think we should start seeing what councils are taking illegal breeding seriously. <laughs> Same with the police as well. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, so just to round it up, um, obviously Muddy Cause Crime, as I've already said, uh, we back everything that you do, Rick. It's amazing. Um, and I'm just going to um, share my screen, hopefully I'll get it right, uh, just to show darling Reggie. Um, obviously Reggie was the pup that Rick bought and tragically died. Uh, which sparked the campaign uh, for Reggie's Law. If um, you want to, if you ha aren't already, um, follow in the Facebook page. It is at Justice for Reggie 2020. The link is in the comments. And you'll also find their website here and also their actual petition. So if you have a read of that as well, and it's a Justice for Reggie um, Facebook page. So Rick, um, like for yourself, um, for people wanting to contact you, firstly, what is the best way? Uh, well, you can go to either way. You can hear us on Facebook Messenger, or you can hear us on Twitter. Uh, email justice for reggie 2020 at gmail.com and also on the website there's, you can write in the box and just comment us about anything really uh like i said we, we support we supported many families this year suffered the same the same as reggie uh like people suffered financially and emotionally we had, we had a couple last week who we lost a dog and it cost them eight thousand pounds and they tried to keep it away uh, alive that long so anyone in need of help uh, like I said, any, any issues with websites, I, I, I'd encourage you to report it to the website, us, uh, as well as local council. Uh, but anyone who wants to get involved, just 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 put just messages as well. Uh, I'm getting really busy at the minute, and and I, I, we speak to Danny, don't we, from uh, Pet Disco? Uh, was it Dog Theft Pet Disco Pet Group? Pet Discussion Pet Group. Theft, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, and uh, and she te she texts me quite a bit, and I still the text in the back. I'm that busy at the minute, and and it's just it's just I've just got really busy. And, you know when you want to do something, so we are looking for volunteers. Uh, but people have gone back to work, and we had about seventeen. It's down to about nine. Uh, we've just not got the hands to do as much as we did, but we'll keep trying. And uh, we've yeah. helped with others. We'll we'll carry on, and yeah, we just need to all stick together and and get that message across the government. Oh, we need change. Definitely. 
And just um, obviously because a lot of people message uh, Muddy Paul's Crime and tag Muddy Paul's Crime in things that we can't help with, um, which will be myself and Molly will be doing a roundup of our lives uh, towards the end of this week to explain a little bit more about what Muddy Paul's Crime is about and what we may be able to help with. Um, as much as we'd like to help everything and do everything we can and you know that's not what we're about um but so the, the main reasons if you just say like the main um reasons you would want people to message you so there's no confusion for people yeah. watching so obviously otherwise it will create a lot more work yeah oh uh, so i'll all we set a target now to work with websites uh, and make changes to websites selling animals so anyone who's bought a, an animal off a website, which is ended up ill or poorly, or uh, it's had a different chip number in it, or something like that, or it's been stolen, uh, we just want it, we just want as much information about dogs from websites, uh, uh, so we can re put report that back. We did start a, a dog theft, uh, you know, talking to uh, local police crime commission and, uh, and local police. Now we carried that on. But with people like you and Danny uh, dealing with dog theft, we've just left that. We, we're trying to be very specific and, and just deal with websites and get as much information. And we found that's really helped because you get a lot more done. When you start venturing off into different, you know, microchipping and things like that, it just becomes a minefield and you kind of lose yourself. So it's just anything to do with websites. If you bought a dog off a website and it's ended up ill or uh poorly or it's had a different chip number or it's been stolen uh, and you bought it from a website we, we can probably help you because we have a, a lot of links into places like gumtree pre love friday ads pets for homes and, uh, and we speak to them often so we can we, we can we can help you best we can and that, that's the thing as i've uh, touched on already and um, quite a few times about people working together although we're doing different things we are actually still working together and coming together with where we're at because each little piece that we're doing all boils down to the things that need to be changed um you know and i say you know we welcome anybody to help uh, where they can and obviously rick is looking for volunteers so if anybody wants to volunteer obviously rick will look into your background and make sure that you are right for justice for reggie um but yeah i mean um thank you so much rick no, thanks very much. Um, and uh, well, just for to say, we spoke a lot about me, but you're obviously doing a lot with the awareness. And, and I, I see, is it Molly come on board? With, is it Lemina Le Productions or something? And it's, I think it's Lemina Productions. Lemina, yeah. Lemina, sorry. And I think, yeah, just well done for, to yourself as well. So uh, you're doing a lot of good work there. And uh, sign your make sure everyone signs a petition as well to regulate uh, rescues because that's that needs to be done. It's It's massive. Yeah, I've just put another uh, petition in, actually. I'm waiting to see if it um, is allowed to go ahead uh, for victim support for the public for dog theft. Oh, Pet theft, yeah. not dog theft. I keep saying dog theft, I do apologise. And is that not uh, a thing at the minute? Pet theft. Does that not happen? I have looked. I couldn't see a similar petition, but I'm sure they'll let me know if there is one. But, yeah. you know, from all the owners that we deal with, none of them are offered victim support stuff then and they are victims 100 yeah so well done and uh, yeah keep it up okay well thanks again rick obviously we will bring you back at a later date as well to do another live with sure. you um right, done thanks. amazing campaign's amazing everybody get behind justice for reggie if you're not already um rick there's a lot of comments um in this feed so if you want to go through them at your leisure or get your team to and answer anyone that wants answers <laughs> Yeah, it would be nice for you to read as well. But thank yeah, you, everybody. Uh, thanks, everyone, for watching. Obviously, that this is the last live uh, for a while. It's just been myself and Molly back. Maybe Friday we'll uh, post up. Um, we'll do some lives in the future. So if you're part of an organisation or a group, um, we're very much about getting your work out there as long as it um, is sort of pet theft related. I'm happy to work alongside anybody that is singing from the same hymn sheet as me <laughs> um, and Rick um, obviously you know you, you've got to have be very very passionate about this to be able to make any changes uh, so I encourage people please please keep making everybody aware of everything that we're doing um, we're doing what we're doing to help all of you and animals so please keep the support up and thank you very much <laughs>